Thank you. 
Um,
In this tutorial, you're going to learn all about the exciting world of logic. Pay no attention to Cuthbert. It's not as complicated as it sounds. I promise. Let's check out the scene. See the buttons on the platforms in front of our good friend Connie? They activate the bridges that will take her to the next platform. At least that's what they're supposed to do. To get them working, you'll need to connect them to the gadgets that control them. You can't see gadgets when you're in play mode, but they let you do all sorts of useful things in edit mode. You can tell gadgets apart by their color and icons. Green gadgets are sensors and inputs. This one is what we call a trigger zone. It's one of the more versatile gadgets. It can trigger other gadgets when it detects something in the scene. Like in this case, Connie standing on the button. Hi, Connie. If you select the gadget with X, you'll be able to see its detection zone. That's it, right there above the button. Press the circle button to deselect the trigger zone, and let's look at the next gadget. Pink gadgets are movers and outputs, meaning they make things happen in the scene. This particular gadget is a rotator, and it's connected to the first bridge. Click R3 to start time, and let's see what it does. Well, not a lot right now by the looks of it. That's because the rotator is switched off. You can tell because the gadget is dim at the moment. But if we connect these two gadgets together, we can turn the rotator on using the trigger zone. In the next step, I'll show you how. Before we start connecting things, make sure you can see both gadgets. You'll notice they have ports sticking out of their sides. Ports on the left are inputs, and the ones on the right are outputs. Hover over the output port on the trigger zone now. You'll see the word detected appear. That means that when the trigger zone detects something, this output will send a signal. Before it can send that signal to the rotator, though, we'll need to connect them with a wire. So hover over the detected output and press R2 or X. You'll notice your imp is now tethered to the port by a wire. Power ports have appeared on the gadgets, too. It's these ports that switch gadgets on or off. OK, drag the wire over to the rotator gadget. Now hover over the power port at the bottom, then press R2 or X. Once the gadgets are connected, the wire will disappear automatically. That way, your scene won't get cluttered. After all, you don't want wires all over the place. You can see the wire again by hovering over either gadget. OK, time to test our connection out. So let's switch over to play mode in the options menu. That's more like it. Now the trigger zone detects Connie when she stands on the button and activates the rotator on the bridge. As soon as she steps off, the rotator stops working. You can use the button to get the bridge lined up with the platform. Once Connie can make it to the second platform, you can head back to edit mode and move on to the next step. Now that we've connected the rotator, let's take a look at the second platform. See the yellow gadget on its side? This gadget isn't a sensor, 
or an output. It's called a microchip. Microchips are used to organize logic in scenes. You can think of them as boxes of gadgets and wires. Let's have a look inside. Hover over this one with your imp. Hold L1 and press X. It's just like scoping into a group of objects. This window is the microchip's canvas. And if these gadgets look familiar, it's because they're two rotators. Each one controls half of this jointed drawbridge. Try to connect the output from the trigger zone to the power ports on the rotators. You can create multiple wires from the same output. Or you can clone wires in the scene by holding L1, then grabbing them with R2. Clone the wire near the rotator to create a new wire from the trigger zone. Once you've connected the trigger zone to the second rotator, switch over to play mode and make sure it's all working. OK, jumping on the button now will activate the trigger zone and raise the drawbridge so that you can cross over the... Oh! Wait a minute. The bridge has dropped down before Connie could cross. That's because the signal to the rotator stopped sending as soon as Connie stepped off the trigger zone. Switch back to edit mode and rewind time with L3. In the next step, I'll show you how to make signals stay on. If we want the bridge to stay up, we'll need to add a gadget between the trigger zone and the rotator to keep it activated. We can do this with a counter. So let's go into the assembly menu. Press square to open it if it's closed. Select the gadgets menu with X. You'll find the counter in the logic and processing section. The gadgets in this menu take an input signal and change it in some way before sending it on. Go ahead and select the counter. Its icon is a tally counter. Now you can see the gadget on your imp. Hover over the mic microchip and it will snap to the canvas. Press R2 or X to stamp the counter onto the microchip, then press circle to unequip it. The counter gadget counts up or down whenever it receives a signal through its inputs. By default, it starts its count at zero and has a target of one. Once it reaches that target, it sends a constant signal through its counterfall output port. Before we connect it though, let's tidy up the wires connecting the trigger zone to the rotators. Just hover over them and press triangle to delete them. Now press R2 or X over the detected output of the trigger zone to create a new wire. Connect it to the increase count input port on the counter. That's the port with the plus sign icon. Now when the trigger zone is activated, the counter will go up to one. And this is the important part, it will stay at one even after the trigger zone deactivates. Now hover over the counter full output port of the counter. This port sends a signal when the counter reaches its target. Create a wire with R2 or X and connect it to one of the rotator's power ports. Then do the same for the other one. Time to switch to play mode and try out and new connections. When you're happy everything's working as it should, return to edit mode and move on to the next step. Just one more bridge for Connie to cross. As you can see, we have another microchip on the platform, so let's open it up. Hover over it with your imp, hold L1 and press X. OK, looks like we have everything we need here. But Connie's an adventurer 
So how about we make this last bridge more challenging? Adding a timer to the logic should get the adrenaline going. Once Connie activates the button, she'll only have a few seconds to cross before the bridge drops back down. Let's head back to the assembly menu. If it isn't already open, press square. Then go into the gadgets section. You'll f find the timer in the same place as the counter, the logic and processing section. Its button has a clock face on it. Now go ahead and stamp the timer gadget onto the microchip with R2 or X. Then unequip it from your imp with the circle button. Now let's take a closer look at the timer's inputs and outputs. You can see their names by hovering over the ports. The first input is a start timer port. Once this receives a signal, it will start the clock. The second one is reset timer, which sets the time back to zero. Over on the output side, we have timer finished and timer output. Timer finished sends a signal when the timer reaches the required number. It's set to five seconds by default. Timer output is a little more sophisticated. The signal it sends represents the timer's current progress. If, let's say, it's only halfway to its target, the signal it sends will be half strength. So how do we connect this so the bridge only stays up for a few seconds? Well, we need the bridge to be raised while the timer is running. So create a wire on the timer output with R2 or X. Remember how we used the counter on the previous platform? We can use one here too. Just like before, connect the wire to the counter's increase count input. Then connect the counter full output to the rotator's power port. Time to see if it works. Click R3 to test it out. As you can see, since the timer isn't connected to a trigger yet, the clock starts ticking as soon as we play the scene. The bridge goes up, but doesn't drop down when the timer finishes. That can only mean one thing. There's a problem with the logic. If you'd like to figure it out for yourself, feel free to check the gadgets and see what's wrong. Or move on to the next step and we'll go through it together. So let's take a look at why the bridge stayed up after the timer finished instead of going back down. Remember how we used the counter earlier to remember the signal from the trigger zone? Well, now it's remembering the signal from the timer, so we need to make it forget that once the timer finishes. Let's go over to the counter gadget. Hover over the inputs to see their names. This one here is reset count. It'll put the counter back to zero, which will turn off the rotator. So all we need to do is connect it to the timer, but to which output? Aha! There we go. We can use the timer finished output. Hover over it and create a wire with R2 or X. Then stretch the wire over to the counter and connect it to the reset count input. But we also need to reset the timer, otherwise the logic will only work once. So let's get another wire from the timer finished output and connect this one to the reset timer input. You'll recognize it by the rewind symbol on it. All we have left to do is to connect the trigger zone to the start timer port so Connie can activate it. Okay, that was a lot of connections. So before we test it out, let's go over the logic we've made. First, Connie activates the trigger zone, which sends a signal to start the timer. 
Once the clock starts running, the timer output becomes active. This tells the counter to count up. That then turns on the rotator and raises the bridge. Now this is where the really clever stuff kicks in. After five seconds, the timer finishes its count, which activates the timer finished output. This in turn resets the counter to zero, cutting the signal to the rotators and lowering the bridge. And let's not forget, it also resets the timer, so the logic can be triggered again if Connie didn't cross the bridge the first time. <sighs> Isn't logic exhilarating? Take your time digesting all that. Logic is easier to read if you route your wires neatly. Grab wires with X to change their paths. You can also move the gadgets around by grabbing them with R2. Feel free to test it out in play mode, but don't leave the scene just yet. I have one more thing to show you. So, on the third platform, we've set up a timer that makes the bridge drop after five seconds. But I think that might be too easy for a seasoned pro like Connie. Let's make it a little bit more challenging. First, if you're in play mode, switch back to edit mode and rewind time with L3. Let's move in closer to the microchip with the timer. You can use the grab cam, R1, to move your view. Now I'll show you how to tweak a gadget's settings. Hover over the timer gadget, hold L1, and press square. This tweak menu contains the settings for the timer. Hover over the sliders and buttons to see their names. The top slider sets the target time for the timer. If we lower this setting, the bridge will stay up for a shorter time. To adjust the value, hover your imp over the slider, then hold X. Use your imp to drag the slider left or right. Set it to around three seconds. It doesn't have to be exact. If you're a stickler for precision, you can adjust the slider incrementally using the up and down directional buttons. Just hover your imp over the slider and press up or down to tweak the value. In fact, why don't we make things really interesting for Connie? Let's set it to 2.5 seconds. You can close the tweak menu now by selecting the cross in the top corner with X. Or you could use a shortcut. Just hold L1, then press circle while hovering over the menu to close it quickly. The same shortcut works for closing microchips. Give it a try now. Hold L1, then hover your imp over the microchip and press circle. Time to test out the scene in play mode. If you have any problems crossing that last bridge, you can always tweak the timer again in edit mode. Remember, you just hover over the gadget, hold L1 and press square to open its tweak menu. When you're all set, take Connie to the last platform and walk through the door to complete this tutorial. Thank <laughs> you. 
In this tutorial, you'll use logic to make health go up and go down. Oh, Cuthbert. Let's start by going into play mode. See if you... Oops. Sorry, Connie. I forgot to fix that. Don't worry, though. Even after falling such a long way, Connie's just fine. There's only one problem. There's no way for her to get back up. What we need is for Connie to respawn on a platform if she falls. So that's going to be our next job. First, switch back to edit mode. Remember to rewind time with L3 as we always do after play mode. In order to make Connie respawn, we're going to use a health modifier gadget. We'll use it to make the floor around the platforms lethal. Health modifiers can damage or heal anything that has a health manager. And, as luck would have it, Connie has one built into her logic. Go to the assembly menu. Open it with the square button if it's closed. Select the gadgets menu, the one with the three connected squares. You'll find the health modifier in the movers and output section, which is represented by a box with an arrow. Now select the button that has a clockwork heart on it. Your imp will now be equipped with a health modifier gadget. Stamp it somewhere central, near the floor, using R2 or X. Then unequip the gadget with circle. Your scene now has a health modifier, but to make it work as intended, we'll have to tweak it first. We'll do that in the next step. Let's go ahead and open the Health Modifiers Tweak menu. Hover over it, hold L1, and press Square. Here you can set the options for how the Health Modifier works. That includes how much health is modified, which is shown in the first slider. Right now, it's set to minus 100. This means it will take 100 health points away from anything it affects. Just enough to make Connie respawn. The modifier mode is set to per hit, so 100 health points will be taken away when anything touches it. But since we want the area around the platforms to be lethal, we need to set the modifier type to zone. Select the zone icon with X now, then go to the zone properties tab so we can change its size and shape. The icon is at the top of the menu and looks like a box in a zone. Look for the zone shape section of the menu, then select the cube. You can use the zone sliders to make the zone bigger. Be careful not to make it too tall. The respawn zone should be level with the pink lines around the platforms. If you need to, Move the health modifier gadget nearer to the floor. When you hover over the edges of the zone, you'll see white arrow gizmos appear. Grabbing these with R2, 
will let you change the size of the zone. Using those, you can make sure the area around the platforms is covered. Now let's test it in play mode and see what happens. Perfect. If Connie falls off now, she'll just respawn back on the platform. Before we move on, maybe we should do something about this booby-trapped bridge. Switch back to edit mode and rewind time with L3. There. See what's causing it? It's that trigger zone. When Connie activates it, the bridge collapses and there's no way across. If you've finished the first logic tutorial, you'll know that the counter is being used to remember the trigger zone has been activated. If you follow the wires, you'll see there's one connected to each block. These red dots on the blocks are not gadgets. They show that a wire is connected to a setting in the block's tweak menu. Explore the logic for yourself. Or, if you want to move on and get Connie on her way, just delete the trigger zone by pressing triangle over it. That'll prevent any of the logic from activating. Then, once Connie can safely make it to the second platform, move on to the next step. Now's probably a good time to show you how to add checkpoints. When playable characters like Connie activate a checkpoint, the scene remembers their progress. So when they respawn, they'll appear at the last checkpoint instead of starting off at the beginning. Go to the assembly menu, then the gadgets menu. If the last section you used is still open, close it by pressing circle over it. Expand the Gameplay Gear section with X, then select the checkpoint. It's the one that looks like a location marker. There. Now your imp is equipped with a checkpoint gadget. The direction of a checkpoint determines which way a character will face when it respawns. So make sure the front of the gadget, the side with the black outline, is facing the direction you want Connie to face. Remove the gadget from your imp with the circle button, then open the checkpoints tweak menu. Checkpoints use a detection zone, just like health modifiers. So select the zone size tab from the menu. This is set to a sphere by default, but to make sure it can't be missed, let's change it to a cube. You can use the zone size sliders to make the checkpoint cover the width of the platform. Above the gadget, you'll see a white move gizmo. Grab it with R2 to put the activation zone where you want it. Just make sure Connie can't miss it. 
The white handle shows the direction Connie will face when she respawns. Check that it's pointing the right way. Grab it with R2 if you need to adjust it. Let's close that tweak menu with L1 and circle. Now try it out in play mode to see if the checkpoint remembers your progress. Sorry, Connie. We're going to have to respawn you again. But it's all in the name of science, I promise. Great, there she is, right at the checkpoint again. When you're ready, go back to edit mode, rewind time, and move on to the next step. This next bridge looks a bit too hot to walk on. But Connie's a tough explorer, and she's always ready for danger. So let's give it a go. Hmm, okay, that block's too big for Connie to jump over. Better get her back to safety before it's too late. Let's switch back to edit mode and see how the bridge is damaging Connie. Move closer to to the bridge and keep an eye out for any gadgets attached to it. Ah, there's one. A clockwork heart icon, so it's another health modifier. It looks like, instead of using a zone, this one is attached to the bridge. So whenever Connie walks on it, she loses health. If only that block wasn't in the way, she could make it across. But what if the block itself could lose health? We could give it a health manager of its own and see how that works out. Go to the assembly menu, then open the gadgets menu. You may need to close the gameplay gear section if you opened it earlier. Then you can expand the movers and output section. Look for a heart icon, not the clockwork heart this time. Select it with X to give your imp a health manager gadget. Stamp one near the block with R2 or X, then press circle to unequip it from your imp. To make the health manager affect the block, we'll need to attach it. The easiest way to attach gadgets to objects is to use what we call surface snap. Grab the health manager with R2 and hold it over the block. All you have to do to activate surface snap is hold L1 while your imp holds the gadget. This makes it hug the surface of any object you hover over. Now release R2 to attach the gadget to the block. You can also let go of L1 to stop using Surface Snap. In the next step, I'll show you how to tweak this health manager. Now that we've given the block health, let's take a closer look at it. Hover over the Health Manager, hold L1, and press Square to open its Tweak menu. The sliders here define the block's maximum and current health. Click R3 to play time, and you'll see the health starts to go down. That's because the bridge's health modifier is damaging it. But you'll notice it's going down much slower than Connie's health was when she was on the bridge. The reason for that is this health manager has a one-second cooldown. So whenever the block takes damage, it's invulnerable for one second after that. Grab the cooldown slider with X and pull it to the left with your imp. So what happens when it reaches zero? Uh, not a lot right now. But we can deal with that in the next step. For now, feel free to experiment with the health manager settings. Start time with R3 to see your changes, then rewind it with L3 to reset the health manager. Once you're done, you can move on to the next step. An object doesn't automatically get destroyed when it runs out of health. So we need to do a bit more work before we can get rid of that block. Let's take a closer look at its health manager. 
If its tweak menu is still open, close that first with L1 and circle. See the output ports on its right edge. Hover over the one at the bottom, the one that has a heart with a cross over it. This is the no health output, which sends a signal when the health manager is depleted. It can be used to trigger any number of things, but right now, we're going to use it to destroy the block. Go to the assembly menu and take a look in the gadget section. It may still be open from earlier, when you selected the health manager. Look for a skull icon on a button in the movers and output section and select it with X. This is the destroyer gadget. It destroys whatever it's attached to. To attach it to the block, we can use surface snap. So hover the destroyer over the block, hold L1 to make it surface snap, and press R2 or X to stamp it. Now you can unequip the destroyer gadget with circle. Okay, before we connect it up, let's just see if it works by clicking R3. Oh, it works all right. When time is running, the destroyer activates and destroys the block. Rewind time with L3 to bring it back. We don't want the destroyer to activate until the block's health has run out. To do that, we'll need to connect the no health output port to the destroyer's power. So hover your imp over the health manager's no health output port and press R2 or X to create a wire. This will make power ports appear on the gadgets in the scene. Stretch the wire over to the destroyer and connect it to the power port with R2 or X. Great! Time to test it again with R3 and see what happens. When the block's health runs out, it will get destroyed, leaving the path clear for Connie. But how do we know how much health the block has left? We could always look at its tweak menu, but you can't see that in play mode. So click L3 to rewind time, and I'll show you how to display health in the next step. If the health manager's tweak menu isn't open already, Open it now with L1 and square. When you hover over the menu sliders and buttons, you'll see ports popping out of the side. These work just like the ones on the outside of the gadget, but there are a lot more of them. And you might also have noticed that there's another gadget stamped on the side of the block. That's a number displayer. If we connect a wire from the current health output to the number displayer's input port, we'll be able to see the block's health count down in play mode. So let's go ahead and do that. Hover over the current health slider's output port. Then press R2 or X to create a wire and stretch it to the number displayer. Once you've connected it to its input with R2 or X, you can switch over to play mode and test out the whole scene so far. Excellent. Now we can see the block taking damage until it's destroyed. Once you can get Connie to the next platform, switch back to edit mode and move on to the next step. Well, Connie made it through, but she's a bit worse for wear. The burn effect you see on her is triggered by the current health output from her health manager. It gives you a visual cue of her health. The more sins she gets, the less health she has. 
I'm not sure poor Connie has enough health left to make it across the last bridge. What she needs is a bit of healing, so let's create a healing zone where she can recharge. This green pad looks like a good place to recover. We can turn it into a healing zone by placing a health modifier on it using Surface Snap. You've used Surface Snap before, so this should be no problem. Go to the assembly menu and select a health modifier from the movers and output menu. It's the one with the clockwork heart on it, remember? Now activate Surface Snap by holding L1. Then attach the health modifier to the green pad. Now you can unequip the gadget with the circle button and open the modifier's tweak menu. We need to change it so it heals Connie. The health modifier is set to minus 100 by default, which won't do Connie any good. She has 100 health to start with, so that will take it all away and make her respawn. Grab the slider with X, drag it right and set it to plus 20. We want the healing zone to heal Connie while she's standing on it, so you also need to set the modifier mode to continuous. You can leave the modifier type as impact, since you've snapped the health modifier to the platform. And that's all there is to it. Close the tweak menu with L1 and circle, and give it a try in play mode. All right, that should give Connie the health boost she needs to cross that final bridge oh she's been through a lot today so take her through the door to end this tutorial Okay, I gotta take off and go do some stuff. <clears throat> I'm sure I'll be back on later. Oof. 